Hi, I'm Mike Ryan. We've had on our blog a series of videos on the famous turquoise mines. Now, one of those that was included were the Royston District. Today we're going to look at a turquoise mine that, while never really achieving famous status, has become very well known because of its association with Royston Turquoise. And this was primarily due to the fact that Blue Moon Turquoise was one of the Dean Otteson's claims and was included in the pay digs that Dean Otteson ran from about Oh, 2005 to 2015, about a 10 year period, those pay digs were ongoing. Now, there were two effects from those pay digs. Number one, it provided some very wanted cash flow to the Otteson family. It's very nice when you know two or three times a week you're going to have five, six, seven, sometimes 20, 20 people or more on these pay digs. And they were all paying, at the end, $100 for a pay dig, which would last somewhere between three hours or so. For some groups, it would be much longer. But let me tell you this. You spend three hours digging around for turquoise, and unless you're a real young'un, you're going to feel it. And for the most part, after that time period, I would say most of those who were paying for that pay dig came away with a good quantity of turquoise. Now, good for the Otisons that way. Not so good for the Otisons when it came to taking their own turquoise that they would mine from those claims to market. Because when your cost of obtaining it is just the amount you paid for the pay dig, you're going to be able to sell that for significantly under the market price. So in a sense, what happened then is the Otisons were competing with themselves for their own turquoise. And really from a business standpoint, you really don't want to get involved in that situation. So today I understand there are still some pay digs. It's being done under the name of the Otteson Brothers, which is uh, Tom and Danny. And they are having pay digs, but I believe the price has gone up substantially. One advantage was to make the name Royston and Blue Moon much more well known in the marketplace. So for those of you buying, I still think there's some opportunities for some really good value. I mean, it's true of turquoise in general, it's very undervalued, but this is especially true on those mines where the pay digs tended to really keep the price in the marketplace down. So we're going to take a look at some very different looks of Blue Moon Turquoise. So this grouping of turquoise is what I would consider sort of a very classic look for Blue Moon uh, with the, uh, the distinctive blue and in the black shirt. Now, as we're also going to see, there's a lot of different looks for Blue Moon. But what is really interesting about this is these cabs were all cut from rough that I mined at a pay dig with uh, uh, Dean Otteson. And this would have been in, let me think, it would have been, it was right before Dean got sick. So that must have been probably around 2015, um, 2014 perhaps. And uh, this was during the period where Dean was running the, the pay digs. And the previous oh, a couple of days before we had this pay dig, there had been a large group that Rob Stapp had led that had come in and had worked out at the actual Royston sites. And the way that a Dean would work this in order for people to find turquoise is that he would go out and seed these sites. He, He'd take material out of the actual pit and then place that in the dump. So he would, in a sense, be seeding the dumps. And uh, he had done that for Rob and his group, but of course they had picked over all that turquoise. So he couldn't take us out to that group. So we went out to the Blue Moon, which is 
considerably more of a drive from Tonopah than to go out to the Quartzite Mountain where the Royston uh, claims are. So we went out there, and he, because he hadn't been able to see this either, he actually let us go into the pit, and we really were able to find some really nice material. And um, it was $100 for the pay dig, and to give you an idea of the yield on that, I cut all this turquoise myself. In fact, it's not even all of the material that I cut from that dig, but this large cab right here is about, it's over 80 carats, and a very beautiful cab, as you can see. And if I had sold this material, that, and selling it at about $2 a carat, which would have been probably less than half of what the market rate should have been for, for this material, and should be for this material, I would have gotten back all my investment there. Uh, and more so, in fact. So you can see what the effect of these pay digs on the market would be because here are all these people going out, digging this turquoise, and if they're cutting it and putting it on the market, it is flooding the market with underpriced turquoise. And that's exactly what happened. Now, we understand why the artisans were doing it. It was providing a steady cash flow but it was probably not in their economic best interest long term by suppressing the price of the turquoise and really creating a illusion in the marketplace as to what the price should be. So uh, that's the trade-off you have with the, the pay digs unless you price them accordingly. And I think now there are pay digs out at Royston and I think the price has gone up significantly for those. So now we're going to look at some very different looks of Blue Moon Turquoise. And I purchased these from a person who had bought directly from Dean Otteson. So I'm very comfortable with the provenance of this turquoise. But we can see here, once again, why turquoise identification can be very challenging because of the different looks from the same mine. Here we see in the center these two cabs, really much closer to what we were seeing in the previous grouping of those that I cut from the pay dig that I attended. Then we see over on this side, we see a series of cabs that really have much more of a look that we would associate more with, let's say, Royston. And then we have this cab down here, which is really kind of unique because of the uh, depth of the, the color and the, the more of the, the brownish make, matrix instead of the black shirt. If we go around here on the other side, we see these two, which have a very different formation and color uh, of, of the turquoise. This one coming in, you could almost say, some people would say, well, that looks more like a verisite. And um, certainly in the area of Blue Moon, which is closer to the Candelaria uh, district than um, certainly Royston, there are verisite claims all through that area. So once again, as we saw in our video on Turkosite and Veracoise, how uh, sometimes the interaction, even though they're two very different chemical formation groups, verisite and turquoise, we can see how they, they do uh, certainly formed in the same areas. Then we have this cab down here, beautiful, deep, rich blue. This one here coming in, well, we'd say that looks more like Royston. So once again, we see the variety of turquoise coming from Blue Moon, and we see again, how the effect of the pay digs were on suppressing the market price of a very beautiful turquoise that should certainly uh, achieve some, some very high prices in the marketplace because all of this turquoise is unbacked and a very hard turquoise, very desirable turquoise. Mm -hmm.